We begin with presidential politics the day after the New Hampshire Republican primary. Former President Trump won a solid victory, but his sole remaining opponent, former South Carolina Governor Nikki Haley, says she is staying in the race. Mr. Trump did defeat Ms. Haley by 11 points, 54% to 43%. Mr. Trump may have won his second primary last night, but Ms. Haley says the race is, quote, far from over, and that she's going to face down Trump in the next major primary in South Carolina, her home turf. She's now focusing on keeping her donors and supporters behind her as she campaigns in the Palmetto State. We're joined now by Center Point contributor and former Senator and Ambassador Scott Brown. Senator Brown, thanks for joining us once again here on Center Point. Thanks, Joe. Good to be on. Thank you. Well, Senator, you know New Hampshire very well and hosted many of the candidates at your famous backyard barbecues there, which we're seeing right here on Center Point. What does Trump's 11 point victory there mean for the nomination contest? Well, obviously, I said uh, in the last time I was on that if she does not bring it within like low single digits, you know, one to four, or she doesn't win, it's going to be a very, very difficult path forward. And while she was full of vim and vigor last night, you know, 11 points is uh, is is a pretty pretty sound uh, you know victory for the former president. Uh, you know, he w was not taking any prisoners, as you can see, after he was not gracious. Uh, I think that's one of the things he really needs to work on personally. Uh, but uh, she's going to stay in, and I, I think it's going to be a little bit difficult to do so. I'm glad you brought that up. Trump got a lot of points for his conciliatory speech when he won Iowa last week. But again, as you just mentioned last night, his victory speech went in the other direction. Uh, what did that do for him, and why do you think he did that, that style? Well, that's just, well, that's a reminder. I mean, talking about her dress, I mean, she looked great, you know. What does that have to do with her campaigning? She did it the New Hampshire way. And, uh, you know, she went as far as she could and pushed as hard as she could. And obviously having the governor uh, out there was, was very helpful to her. And she is the last person standing. The question is now, will the donors and, and the, the super PACs stay in to help her? It is her own home state, but two of the senators are supporting, obviously, Pre President Trump. Her former lieutenant governor is supporting President Trump. So, you know, it's going to be very, very difficult. She's hoping, you know, there's going to be a better turnout and pe people are going to remember, you know, what she did when she was governor. They, she's going to certainly go and remind them because she was obviously in the U.N. She was and has been campaigning for a while. So she needs to go home and, and start pressing the flesh again. Will it be enough? If she doesn't win it, it's over. I, I think it's good. What's the path? Uh, it gives the path to come in second and second and second. What, what's the path to victory? And, and I think that's what she and really the voters around the country need to ask. Well, speaking of donors, last week, one of her billionaire donors said, quote, if she doesn't get traction in New Hampshire, you don't throw money down a rat hole, end quote. So what's your assessment of what she did last night? And did she gain enough traction to keep enough donors to continue past South Carolina? Well, I think that's why you saw her be so feisty after. Like, yeah, this is just starting, you know, New Hampshire's first, but it's not the last. Yeah, that's true. But, you know, you needed to get a little closer. I said lower single digits. Uh, I thought she needed to win or one to three points. That's traction. You know, when you had, what, eight or nine people, down to five, down to four, now it's between the president and her. She got a lot of the independents, obviously a majority, and she got some of those Democrats who were just unaffected, not enough to really make a difference. But the Republican base certainly was with President Trump, and, you know, he, he won it pretty handily. The question that I think we all need to ask is, if it continues along these lines where the president gets his base of, of, of Republicans, and he has no Democrats, basically, and he gets a, some independents, but a lot of those people, women especially, that just don't like him, they're tired of the demeaning remarks about people's dresses and things like that. Uh, is that enough to make them support him? Because here's the, here's the caveat to all that, is that people in this election in New Hampshire, they reflected back to when President Trump was in office. Low inflation, uh, mortgage rates were low, the border was secure, we were getting out of wars. There was not this unrest that you see all around the world. Our, our foes respected us and our, and our allies respected us. And uh, that's not happening under Bidenomics. And so what is Joe Biden's actual message? You know, you're better off with Bidenomics. Uh, no, you're not. 
So that's what people are reflecting back to say, well, if Trump could do it once, he's, he can do it again. And I'll hold my nose and I'll vote for him because I want my kids to get out of my house with a lower mortgage. I want the fentanyl to stop. I want this border to be secured. It's outrageous. It's criminal what this administration and this president is doing to our country. Criminal. Okay, so we, we believe both of those, Trump and Biden, have locked up the nominations uh, for their campaigns. In the meantime, we saw how Dean Phillips received 20% of the vote in the New Hampshire Democratic presidential primary. Let's talk, not talk about him, but let's talk about that percentage. Does that make Biden or Trump more nervous knowing that there is a percentage of voters out there that don't like either candidate and that a third party candidate could take some votes away from them? Because we also saw Robert F. Kennedy Jr.'s political action committee raise $5.8 million for his independent campaign at his birthday party on Monday. So do you see some sort of groundswell of support for independent and third party candidates? Well, I told you, RFK is polling around 20, 22 percent. He is going to have ballot access. And the question is for not only the no labels, but for others is like, OK, so what's the plan? So you get 20 percent. Who are you going to take it from? Are you, are you entering the race to be a spoiler? Are you entering the race because you think you're going to win? Are you entering the race because you're building for maybe the next election cycle? Like, what's the plan? What's the purpose? Who is it going to hurt? I think it hurts pretty much depending on who it is. As I said before, RFK Jr., I think the Blue Dog Democrats will go to him. The people who don't like what Trump did with Fauci and the, all the vaccinations, you know, they're going to go with him. And then if you have a, a third party, no labels, you're probably going to get, you know, uh, some of the disenfranchised Republicans who are now independents are going over there. So I think it, it basically it's, it's an equal draw. And then, you know, so what's the plan? How do you win that? Are you just being a spoiler or not?